Good evening and welcome to It's Only TV But I Like It. Eight fun-packed shows that build into an entire series for you to keep, treasure and record over. <laughs> Research has revealed that 15% of our home audience make love while the show is on. And, more surprisingly, so do 50% of our panel. <laughs> so, let's meet the teams. On my left, he's moody, he's magnificent, but most of all, he's moody. Please welcome Jack G. <laughs> Joining Jack, the man who has hosted the longest-running show on Channel 4 and who, after 14 years, has perfected the catchphrase Hello, uh, um, and uh, welcome to um, the Countdown. <laughs> Please welcome Richard Whiteley. <laughs> Joining them is Brookside's own Bev McLaughlin, who's recently been trying to marry the grandfather of an illegitimate child, making her wife as well as her own grandmother and mother-in-law. <laughs> Just tried buying a birthday card for that one. She is, of course, Sarah White. Opposing Jack's team, he's mean, he's magnificent, but most of all, he's mm, gay. <laughs> Please welcome Julian Clary. <laughs> Joining Julian, an actress and chart topper who once had a top ten hit with Come Outside, the only pop record officially endorsed by the Vatican's family planning department. <laughs> Please welcome Wendy Richard. From fleeting the team, 77 inches of solid Scotsman, is a fanatical supporter of Scotland's national football team, so there'll be a new experience for him to enjoy tonight, getting through to the second round. Please welcome <laughs> Mr John Leslie. OK, our first round is called Are You Sitting Down? and concerns that classic moment in any TV series when bad news is about to be delivered. Like the moment that Richard looks to the camera on Countdown and says, and in Dictionary Corner today, Roy Chubby Brown. <laughs> Julian, your team will shortly see a dramatic TV clip taken from a well-known programme. Your job is to speculate what the bad news is likely to be. Your clip is from the BBC's all-too-realistic dramatisation of the life of the modern firefighter that is Fireman Sam. Fireman Sam? Here we are, sir. A good few tenors to add to the 300. Would you step into my office, please? Count this, Penny. Oh, heck. Something's up. What is it, sir? Well, uh... <laughs> well, uh, what do you think could be up in Fireman Sam's department? I think this is the, the episode where Fireman Sam gets a job as a male escort <laughs> and um, he's been riding Phyllis down the high street. <laughs> Unfortunately though his helmet has gone yellow <laughs> and this is his pimp inviting him into the office <laughs> to tell him as much. Maybe I'll just ask Jack whether he's had any food. I think he brings him into the office to say do you ever get the feeling none of us are real? <laughs> I think he's probably just done something quite simple with it, like put it on uh, some horse in the 2.30 and it still hasn't come in. <laughs> See, we can trust our fireman, can't we? That's we can, yes. I'm a great fan of the fire brigade. So am I. <laughs> I like the hoses. Yeah, and the uniform. And the for uniform. Me, yeah. I think they're probably collecting for a worthy cause yeah. and some of the money has gone missing or some such problem like that. Well, that sounds like a good guess to me. Let's see just how close you are. What is it, sir? Well, uh, a bit of a mystery. There was no money in the case. Not a penny. <laughs> there you go. The bad news is, of course, that Sam's hard work collecting on behalf of the local hospital seems to have come to nothing, as the collection case has nothing in it. Sam's day is never without incident. Scarcely a day goes by in the Welsh Valleys without him having to rescue a cat from a tree, pull a boy's head from railings, or remove a farmer from a sheep. <laughs> So, quite right there, three points to you, Jack's team now, and we have a clip from The Bill for you. It unusually features a spot of animal crime and is entitled A Little Bit of Paradise. Clive Pond Murray? Yes. PC McCann, Sunhill, WPC Stevie Derwin? Yes. Uh, we understand you're interested in purchasing a green-winged macaw. Off Mrs. Holroyd, yes. There's nothing wrong with its documentation, is there? No, sir. It's the bird. What's wrong with it? <laughs> I should know this really because my parents run a pet shop, so... Do you like tropical birds? Uh, no. No? Julian, you like a cockatoo, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure 
that's such an old joke. I'm <laughs> I know, that's such an old joke. It tickled your fancy, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> I can't believe you said that! <laughs> I think they could be saying something like, uh, we do have some bad news, there were also two dozen oysters uh, to be delivered to you, but the paracetamol... <laughs> <laughs> Just want to check, do you want all your own gags? Or do yeah. you have, uh... <laughs> oh, the McCaw uh, can't arrive at this chap's house because... Uh, it's been apparently making obscene phone calls all day, and it's up before the beak. Oh. <laughs> it was almost a spontaneous burst of applause, which I think was more in pity than scorn, but I'm not... <laughs> you want to chip in, or...? Oh, well, Richard. Yes? <laughs> yes? I've slipped into a coma. <laughs> <laughs> I think the policemen have roughed it up a bit. <laughs> the course of their inquiries and it's accidentally fallen downstairs. <laughs> okay, Jack. He says, what's wrong with it? And the copper says, do I look like a vet? <laughs> That's good. Let's check your answer and your answer with the original. What's wrong with it? It's been stolen. Oh, no. We need to eliminate you from our inquiries. Can we see your Avery? <laughs> okay, uh, that was right, of course. Well, nearly right. The parrot had been stolen and they need to inspect the old man's Avery. <laughs> One for both teams now. We have a clip from a short public information film. These were made to warn the public of the dangers of everyday life in the 1970s. <laughs> Things like crossing the road between parked cars, wearing dark clothes at night, being Richard Whiteley's tailor. <laughs> but can you tell me, if you will, what danger this film was warning the house-proud grandmother about? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just a little teaser for you there. What do you think was the warning in that film? I, I actually noticed that the registration number of yeah. that maxi was DLT, Dave Lee Travis. <laughs> so it was obviously, it was uh, a public information warning <laughs> campaign <laughs> against uh, Dave Lee Travis coming around to your house. That lovely old lady who likes a nice shiny passageway... This is true. <laughs> ...has been... Polishing away while smiling, high on Valium, and <laughs> shiny floors can be dangerous. They, they, they must, must be what they're warning us She can come around to my place any time. My floors are a terrible mess. You're, oh. not, you're not terribly choosy, are you, John? Well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> if she'll clean the floor like that, honestly. All right, let's see who is the closest. <laughs> Polish a floor and put a rug on it. You might as well set a man trap. <laughs> and to think he'd only just come from the hospital. See, what we don't realise out there is that the woman had actually put a man trap down, I think, by mistake. <laughs> Um, of course, the dangerous slippery rugs, something very common in the Bruce Forsyth household. <laughs> so at the end of that round, I'm going to give you both two points, because you're both pretty close there. So at the end of that round, I see that Jack's team is somewhat behind, but don't despair, you've got three points. Julian's team, well in the lead, with a magnificent five. I'm sure we all remember those stars who would never have made it to the top without the TV talent shows of the 70s. Lenny Henry, Victoria Wood, and of course Joe Pasquale remembers them as well. <laughs> but it's easy to forget what those shows give to the world of showbiz. Who can forget Hollywood actor Al Pacino's first TV break on Opportunity Knox? Back then, of course, he was the funny one in Pacino and Ball. <laughs> in this round, Opportunity Knockers, we'll be asking the teams to look at three acts from talent shows past and ask which one is still making a living from show business. Our first act appeared on New Faces in 1976, coincidentally the year of the drought. They're a brother and sister combo called Paul and Avis. <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, appeared on Opportunity Knox in 1978. They were husband and wife team with a country and western bent called The Bicep. Just there's another way to freedom in the morning What's that tumble dryer doing with it? <laughs> okay, well they're the first two. Our final act from Opportunity Knox in 1978, Hal from Norwich, and they perform under the moniker Airport. I went down the disco <laughs> the other night. I think you really move The band was way out of sight. And there were things to lose. There you go, Airport. Uh, he looks like he's dancing like someone else has got his arms behind him, isn't he? He's doing that. <laughs> so uh, let me ask you, who's still working and actually appearing at the moment at Lucas Sport and Social Club, Wolverhampton? Is it the husband, wife, country and western duo, the bicep? Is it the midget carpenters, Paul and Avis? Or is it the hopefully terminal Airport? Actually, I know that uh, Paul and Avis, the first couple that we saw, um, went on to open uh, their own car hire company, <laughs> uh, Paul's Rentals. <laughs> it was never that successful. I know who these two are, this bicep, and uh, it can be revealed on this programme tonight. They, they were the half of ABBA before they met the other half. <laughs> so what you're saying is you know all the bicep, Richard? <laughs> if you want to put words into my mouth, Jack. What would we like to put in your mouth, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a consonant, vowel, consonant, consonant. <laughs> um... <laughs> The bicep, said they... Is your house really dirty? Because <laughs> <laughs> I could... What, you're free? I could come round for a squirt and a wipe. <laughs> Richard, so I'll, Lord, yes, I'll sit down with you later and explain some of this. <laughs> <laughs> he's furiously taking notes over there. I don't know what he's doing. In my dim and distant youth, I was a glass collector in a social club. And I think that I have seen Paul and Avis. Seen but they all merge into one grotesque. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, we think we think Paul and Avis. We'll go with Paul and Avis. Paul and Avis. Yes. Okay, yes. that's your vote, Julian. My money's on the buy, the buy set. I like mm. her um, relaxed approach to eyeshadow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the trouble with Avis is she's not got enough makeup on. Yeah, and, and she has. I don't think there is enough makeup for Avis. <laughs> 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 but um, you go with the buy set. You're going to be Paul and Avis? Going to be Paul and Avis. The answer is the bicep. Well done. <laughs> uh, the bicep. <laughs> the bicep who've just won the Midland Club Award for Best Musical Duo for the second time, and they've kindly sent us this personal message. Hi, Hi Jonathan. Jonathan. You finally tracked us down after 20 years. And we're still very much in the business. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, well, you get the point, so that means at the end of that round, the scores are Jack's team. I'm afraid you're still way behind with, frankly, a rather pathetic and embarrassing three. <laughs> While rude. Julian's team are romping <laughs> to what seems a certain victory with a beautiful eight. Hello. A perfect eight. Just last year, a 77-year-old man, John Glenn, was blasted into orbit aboard the space shuttle with the immortal words, that's one small step for man, one giant damp patch for mankind. I'm 77, you know, I can't help myself. <laughs> the old still have much to offer, as they demonstrate in our next round, Granny Knows Best, where we invite several silver-haired senior citizens to describe some well-known TV shows. It's for our teams to decide who or what show they could possibly be on about. The sooner they guess the right answer, the more points they'll get. There's ten points hanging on this first one. So guys, can you tell me what Bill, Rose and Dolly here are talking about? Young man, 
he's got a long way to go yet, but uh, he's all right if he sticks to what he's doing. Oh, he looks very, uh, you know, like that, and uh, all smiles on his face. He's really good. I like him. He's a very good actor. He's come on ever since, like, because he used to be a bit backward at us. <laughs> But apart from that, he's come on really lovely. Um, Julian, <laughs> your uh, turn. Well, Nick Berry springs. <laughs> <to me. laughs> he has come on though, Nick. Well, it's a shot in the dark. <laughs> Just with the walk, and Michael Barrymore really. But, but he doesn't really. He's not, really he's not young. an actor. No, he's not an actor as such. And he's not that young. <laughs> but he has come on. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Jim Where? Davidson myself. He's good. They might have been talking about him. Oh, who's it going to be, Julian? It's quite hard to tell at this stage, but as we both simultaneously thought... <coughs> yeah, it's the first one that comes to mind, Yeah, we'll, isn't we'll it? say Nick Ferry for now. Let me ask Jack Steen. I think they're talking about their night warden. <laughs> <laughs> well, Darren Day sprang to my Darren mind. Day. Always smiling. He's always smiling. God knows what on earth he has to smile about. <laughs> <laughs> you're going with Darren Day, you're wrong. And you're going with Nick Ferry? You won't. Here they are describing yeah. the same person. Can anyone get it for five points? When he come out again, he had a lovely day with his suit on. He looked really lovely. And he's t he always wears a tie, that's why I like him. <laughs> he's got plenty of money, that's why they find him attractive. I wouldn't mind a bloke like that. <laughs> Some promotional thing that I was on once with uh, 600 rather alcoholic heating installers. <laughs> <laughs> they had... Um, God, my memory for names. He's dead now. Wonderful chap. Um, <laughs> but anyway, come back to him in a moment. He was there as a warmer upper. When he said he's watched there as a warmer upper, he might be like he was the first turn on. on Do you know what I mean? Yes. Not top of the bill. Well, you can't really take any notice of what any of them are saying. <laughs> We can, also we haven't got around. I mean, it's just, it's just, it just takes a bit of imagination, that's all. Well, my imagination says ba Michael Barrymore. OK, that's going to be your guess this time. Who do we think? Well, we, we, it's daft, really, but we thought of Bob Monkhouse, because, you know, mm. he wears a tie, but he's not young, although you think that he's young to well, them. Well, he's younger than them, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone is young to them. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to go with Monkhouse? Well, well not no, really, no. We can't think of anybody else. else. What are you going to go with? I can't say I'll go with Monkhouse, no, but I... <laughs> I, I think that's our guess, yes. Your guess will be Bob Monkhouse. Your guess is Michael Barrymore. You're both wrong. Fingers on the buzzers for this oh, final part. Definitely. The team that buzz in first pick up the points that are left on the screen. Here we go again. How he is on the television is how he really acts. With those that, you know, he's doing the show. Julian. Dale Winton. I think it is no. Jim Davidson. You've got to buzz in when they're talking. Come on, uh, the no, wait, wait, give us a chance. Jim Davidson. <laughs> I said it first. But you didn't buzz. No. <laughs> you didn't buzz. Well, you don't mess with that one. <laughs> I said she doesn't know me yet. <laughs> Jim Davidson, before <laughs> we'd even got to the second bit, <laughs> at the beginning. When Jonathan asked each team... Don't be me, then. You stupid, you did Nothing to do with me. Oh, did he? Before he said oh, you can somebody have it, else, you can he have said it, that. Don't say she can have oh, it. Oh, have it. Oh. It's a simple enough instruction. <laughs> It was, of course, Jim Davidson. She you did was. say it early, but your team I captain did. didn't take it from me, you see. Ah, oh, your I fault. Did take it. <laughs> I just want to deflect oh, okay. it from me. <laughs> it's fault. It great it's not my fault. <laughs> the rules are written down somewhere. I have to follow well, them. Well, the British public knows who said it first. <laughs> oh, we know what on Jack's team. <laughs> Jim Davidson has a notorious track record of bust-ups with his various ex-wives. For anyone interested, the story of his stormy relationship with his latest partner, Deborah Corrigan, is featured in this month's edition of KO magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at another one. Here are David, Margaret and Jessica describing some more of their favourite television. Oh, I know. The one, oh, I see. The one who... Oh, what is that his name? Oh, it's good, isn't he? Oh, it's Mark. Oh, he didn't come out with some things. I left it on hoping for some news, I think, one day. And so, oh, awful rubbish. <laughs> Terrible rubbish. Well, I know a lady. She comes to uh, Michael Sobo Luncheon Club. 
and she won't hear me say a word against it. Oh, he's lovely, always oh, marvellous. I said, do me a favour. I said, do you really think so? He's a lovely fella. I said, I agree, but what about his show? Oh, I like it, I like it. It's fun, it's fun. And she's an ordinary woman, she's very orthodox. <laughs> Her husband works in the synagogue, he's very orthodox, but he also, you know, is a sportsman and he's dances well, but he's very religious, ultra-religious. And she likes it and I don't, and I'm, ir I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not agnostic, I'm agnostic. <laughs> so it's a favourite uh, amongst athletic, dancing, orthodox Jews. <laughs> Got to be easy. Julian? Well, what's something controversial, obviously, because Jessica was saying how bad the show is, never mind him, or vice versa. So, Jerry Springer? The answer is Jerry Springer. Oh. And as we approach the halfway mark, I see the scores now after that magnificent guesswork there from John on Julian's team. Jack, you're even further behind. <laughs> Frankly, I hadn't thought it possible, but now you have a meagre eight, while Julian's team have a quite spectacular 18. <laughs> Our next round is Who Are We?, where we ask the teams to don celebrities. Faces. First they have to put on goggles, uh, which are just like these ones here, right? and then when they've got these on, they have to put on a face, an attached face, like this, you see? And then they have to try and... Oh, I can't see you very well, the other set. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little joke. Um, that's what they have to do. So my command, Julian and team, will now each uh, attach their goggles. Put your goggles on, yeah. upon which Jack will attach one of three TV face masks of his choosing, all of which belong to a well-known show. Jack, if you're ready, you'd like to go over and attach those. The object is for Julian's team to find out who they are by asking Jack, Sarah and Richard the right questions. Jack's team must answer as efficient as possible without actually giving the game away. So Julian and team, as soon as those are on, I'll ask you uh, to try and guess who, <laughs> who you are and what show... <laughs> You all inhabit. <laughs> okay. All right. on. Take it away, Julian's team. <laughs> well. Am I on the television? The show's called um, It's Only TV. But I like it. <laughs> Everything featured on the programme is or has been on television. Have I had my breasts enlarged? <laughs> no. I hope not. <laughs> is, it, um, is it a comedy or a drama? It's a drama. Was it written by Jane Austen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now that still hasn't been settled. We think one episode might have been inspired by her work. <laughs> is it a police drama? Yeah. Yes. No. Is, it, is it American? Miles no. away. It's British. Yes. British? Yes. It's action packed. I'll give you a clue. They weren't amateurs. Professionals. Oh. Well, well done, though, despite the incredibly easy clue. OK, uh, three points for you. Thank you. OK, your turn now, Jack's team. If you'd care to don your goggles, June, if you're ready, you can go around there. Once again, the game is saying you can start questioning once the master on. They will answer. And I will probably give you an improbably... <laughs> Stop touching. OK, if you'd like to start guessing. Are we an American programme or an English one? No, you're very English. Very English. Yeah. Are we real life people or cartoons? You are to Sam. <laughs> well, it's an interesting, interesting question. You're not really real, but uh, you, can't, you can't operate without someone real being involved. And you're not cartoons either. So we're puppets. Could say that. Well, oh, yes or no, we're puppets. You. Children's TV? Yes. Ah. Do we have a human friend? Yes. Ah. Ah. Are we telling ah. Blue Peter. No. <laughs> no. no. I think no. I know. Go on, Sarah, what? Is it Sooty and Sweet? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, well done. Uh, you get the extra point there, so it's four points to you. Very well done. Good guessing. Okay, 
And at the end of that round, I see that the scores are now changed, but not enough to cheer Jack up because your team still have a meagre 12 points. Double figures. While you're skipping brightly and boldly into the future like characters from an old book by Enid Blyton, perhaps, who just discovered a magic chest full of jewels that will transform them into wizards and witches. <laughs> With 21 points. And so we come, I'm afraid, my friends, to our final quick-fire round, which we call Catchphrase. I'll give the team the first part of a well-known TV saying, and the teams must buzz in with a suggested ending. You've got 90 seconds to complete as many as possible. Here we go. Baldrick from Blackadder. I have a cunning... Lingus. <laughs> you know, it's not the right answer, and I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I can say it, but I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure after a few drinks you could, Julian. <laughs> Andy Pandy, famous for saying, time to stop play just for today. Andy and Teddy must now... Yeah. Pay for their crimes during the war. <laughs> Richard. Go off muffin the mule. <laughs> You've been spending too long with Julian. No, it was go away. <laughs> Russ Abbott from Russ Abbott's Madhouse, in this particular character, used to say, See you. NT. <laughs> Jimmy. Yes. Richard Whiteley from Countdown, famous for saying, It's nine in the frame, let's get... Uh, naked, Carol. <laughs> you... He just gave the right answer. I don't know what you're buzzing in for. <laughs> no, it's nine in the frame. Let's get Richard. On with the game. Of course right. you know it. It's just, yeah. We just wanted to hear you say it yourself. It's nice. Oh, well, you got it. No. Well. Shut up. <laughs> Father Jack, Father Ted. Uh, Father Jack from Father Ted who said, Feck ass. La la and po. <laughs> <laughs> no, i not. Oh, that unfortunate wheezy farty sound means that the final scores now stand well. Jack, you have a predictable and somewhat depressing 14 points. Julian's team, you've done spectacularly well even by your exceptional standards. You have a gorgeous and kissable 21. Thank you to our team, thank you to Sarah, to Jack, to Richard, thank you to Julian and John and Wendy of course. That was It's Only TV But I Like It, the only show on television that's guaranteed 100% Carol Vorderman free. <laughs> we leave you with Granny Margaret telling a Jim Davison joke far better than he ever could. Thanks for watching, good night. Yeah, that came from. Yeah, he walked into the, he walked into the public bar, he walked into the pub, 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 and he asked the barman, he said, uh, have you seen my brother? Uh, Sonny, uh, Sonny, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, he, said, have you, he said, have you seen my brother? He said, what? He said, oh, he said, have you seen my brother? And the barman said, what's he look like? So he, he walked in, the, the penguin walked into the pub and he said to the barman, have you seen my brother? And he said, what's he look like? <laughs>